It's time for story story story. If you are watching my channel, you might have seen that I managed to get myself the GeForce RTX 39. Yes, this thing here is the Father's Edition. Some people say that those cards, usually used as reference cards, are not so good, but this was the case, I guess, with the early series, because the 3090 is rather a very stable build now, of course. It is not really pumped or supercharged, you know, with overclocked RAM and with the best cooling, but I got this baby for 500 euro. And I can tell you now, with my Ryzen 5700X, I get it also with my RAM, guys, so you can see two sticks of Viper Steel, 32 gigabytes each, together 64, it's a pair, and then another two sticks G-Skill, that is 16 gigabytes, so I have 64 and 32, I have 90, 80 gigabytes of memory. And guys, I'm pretty happy with the setup that I have. Now, the only thing that was missing is the storage, and it's not that I don't have enough disk, because I have here this baby, and on the back, some more hard drives. I do also use, currently, this thing here as my system boot drive. So it's a Kingston KC, 3000 and it's only one terabyte so today i am upgrading the setup with this little baby here this is again kingston guys it is the nv3 pca express 4 and vme m2 it is two terabytes so the advertised speed is 6000 so what i'm gonna do right now guys you can see i have luckily another slot here for my nvme drive i'm using a gigabyte b550 this is the gaming version 2 revision 1.3 it's probably not the best motherboard around but this baby has been serving me for almost like two years paired with the ryzen 5700x with the big quad so it's very quiet guys and now after securing the 3090 i'm able to play some nice games besides of course using this as my main workstation setup to be able to produce the videos for youtube so here is the other slot, so let me put it in, hook it up, and then I'm gonna go and do some benchmarks on this drive. And we're gonna see how good this Kingston baby is. By the way, this costed something like 115 euro. I think it's fair for two terabytes. Now let's put it in. Ta-da! All right, all right. Yeah, that's not it. All right, here guys, who would have thought this little tiny small thing here has a size of two terabytes. Now let's install it. All right, guys, it's in and you know, this wiggling is kind of normal. So now we need to secure it to the mount on the board and that's gonna be pretty much it. I am checking the fit, all nice. Now let's put the cover back and let's hop on the PC and see how quick this thing is. And well, we're gonna benchmark it, of course. So here we are back in Windows and the Kingston NV3 is already in my PC. The first thing we need to do is to format it, guys. But before we do so, here it is, Kingston SNV, guys. It's two terabytes, everything good. Power on hours, zero hours, it's absolutely brand new. But of course now we will have to format it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to create a partition. I'm going to use NTFS and we're just going to do it in one partition. So let's hit apply, all right. Yeah, I expect this to be a rather fast action. Now it's ready, right? Practically that's it. Also what I would like to do, I'm going to change the name. So I'm gonna change the label and just put Da Vinci. All right, let's know that this is Da Vinci. I'm gonna use this mainly for my video recording. Voila, name change. Here we are, iDrive is created. Everything is absolutely empty, guys. Now I'm using the Crystal Disk Info. This is the Suzuki Edition to just check on some of the parameters. And I'm also using the Crystal Disk Mark to do the benchmark. So I'm just going to select I, right? This is the iDrive. And now I'm going to hit all. So what the tool will do right now, it's gonna read some data, it's gonna write some data, and then at the end it's gonna give us the read and write speed with megabytes per second. Now the advertised speed is 6,000 megabytes. Well, with the equipment that I use right now, I'm not able to actually get to those numbers, but hey, I can read with like what, 3000 megabytes per second and that absolutely makes sense guys because even when I try to edit 8k videos No, I'm joking. I do this only twice a year when I'm testing 8k video Usually I shoot 4k 4k 30 sometimes 4k 60 and the highest bandwidth that I use is 120,000 kilobits per second 
or it's like 120 Mbps. So with 3000 megabytes per second, I think I'm absolutely safe. Now let's wait for the benchmark to finish. Then I'm going to also test my previous drive. That is again by Kingston, but hey, let me show you. The previous drive that I use is the SKC. It's only one terabyte. By the way, it is the absolutely same standard. NVM Express 1.4, 1.4. So the new one is Smart Trim. Volatile right cache, the old one is exactly the same guys, but my old drive has been already being powered for almost like 10,000 hours And this thing is a brand new by the way Yeah, I know a lot of you are gonna look at this and say hey you have something. Yes I know I have a hard drive guys that it's so old All right, this thing is a traditional HDD and all with like magnetic plates This thing's been around for like almost five years 41 almost 42,000 hours and yes, it has some problems Nevertheless, I just use this as a random drive to just throw whatever data I want and I want to move to this uh, SSDs and the ME emiss to be able to use the higher speed the bigger bandwidth for my video editing and Yeah, it's good to have crazy good speeds and I know a lot of you are, are gonna laugh on this You're gonna say like hey, you know what? I'm getting like 10,000 megabytes per second. Well, I don't need 10,000 and uh, with the motherboard that I have this is as much as I can get. Honestly, this is absolutely not bad. I'm really happy. And you can see that the temperature now is 61. This is the reason also why some people are putting heat sinks on the NVMe's. Now, guys, usually, you know, you're not going to do something like this uh, with normal, regular usage. Like, I don't really see a use case where you're going to be using like 3000 megabytes. Nevertheless, I'm just doing this for the benchmark. So 61 seems to be quite a lot. If I just want to see what is going to happen when I try to test my previous drive. And let's see if we're going to get to like 61 Celsius. Oh, 7,000? Oh, wow. I'm going to copy one file from my C drive to my I drive, like from the uh, one terabyte and the ME drive to the two terabyte and just see what happens in real time. So let's go with this 13 gigs of file. So I'm just going to hit copy. All right, so I'm gonna copy the file. I'm gonna go to my new iDrive, where it is, it's here, and I'm gonna press paste. And guys, I am using TerraCopy. So if you want a better copy, then you can use TerraCopy or also FastCopy, but TerraCopy is good. I'm gonna show you why. And let's just see, Ooh, wow, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Two and a half gigabytes per second, guys. I'm thinking not that bad at all. And just to be 100% sure, guys, I'm gonna run another benchmark, this time using the AS SSD benchmark tool. So I'm gonna go directly to my new iDrive and I'm gonna start, start. Oh, all right. Yeah, I can see it's, a, it's pretty much the same speed, which is a bit weird, guys, but I'm just thinking, you know, it's maybe my motherboard, maybe the second slot, something. Why? Because when you go online and you search for this drive, well, there are some people actually able to achieve, you know, higher scores with this drive. But then at the end of the day, 2,600 megabytes per second, I think it's, it's absolutely enough, guys. Let's go and also do a check on the first drive. I'm just gonna start here. So for sure, my first drive is faster, guys. It's almost like double the speed, right? So we have sequential. 4K, this is interesting, guys. Let's see how much I'm gonna get here with 4K. This is interesting. So this is the first result, guys. I'm just going to take a screenshot and place it here for our convenience, all right? And now I'm gonna go one more time to my iDrive and restart the benchmark. So as you can see, yeah, it's safe to assume that it's like at least 50% slower. And again, it could be that it works as intended or it's the way it is. Nevertheless, guys, I am getting almost the same rates here on the right on the 4K and also on the read, I guess. So it's not so drastic. Will this be good enough for me editing my videos? Absolutely. I don't think I'm going to have a problem. You know, with sequential read that it's almost like 2,700 megabytes per second. I think fair enough. So 6,000 versus 9,000 and a lower 2,200 versus 3,500. That is what it is, guys. I really hope that the test made sense, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay safe. DST. Over and bye.